going to be hearing from our youth this morning, and many of you know that we are going to that that this whole summer we've we've kidded around about how much vacation time I've taken, uh, as as I have um, spent a lot of time on youth conferences and uh, on mission trips and so forth, um, and you know. Too often, those kinds of things happen, and we don't get a chance to hear about the, uh, the things that, that happen. And if you're in a first service, you may not even realize we actually have a youth group, because uh, most of them come to the second service. Uh, and in some of our, our, our youth actually attend other churches and then show up here on Sunday nights at our youth group. Uh, last week, I think we had about 26 here um, and then this past week there were 14 of us that went to a mission trip uh, a couple weeks before that we had a senior high trip that had 19 uh, that went to um, to Panama City and uh, before that we had a middle school trip that only four of us were able to go this time but there were tens of time before that and and uh, I'm sure there'll be more the next time but they go on these trips, and some of you have been helping them to uh, raise money. You've been praying for them, and you never get a chance to hear what actually God has been doing in their lives. And so I wanted this morning, uh, as I made a command decision to, uh, to delay the last sermon of our Choosing Happiness sermon for next week, and since we had a combined service, to go ahead and hear from our youth. And I want to start off by uh, showing, we asked some of them uh, who said that they were not going to be able to be here this morning, and just so happens that they had a video camera. Uh, and so we took a video, and Alex has put that together for us. And so uh, we're going to hear from a few of our youth uh, about this past mission trip. And then also, uh, then I'll invite the rest of them to come forward and you'll be able to hear from them as well. And so, Alex, if you're ready. Yep. Hi, I'm Alex Caro. I'm 16 years old. Hi, I'm Brenda Caro. I'm 14 years old. I have to say the best part was being able to get a personal connection with a lot of the other members of the youth group in the context of worshiping God. My favorite part was uh, deactivate where we got to take a more in-depth look at the Bible and hear people, people's different perspectives on it. And we did that over Big Stuff and Bunch. Deactivate is a youth group-led Bible study and we look, take a more in-depth look at the Bible and ask different questions about it. We look at certain books. Right now we're going from Romans to Ephesians I mean, because the, the kind of personal connection you get from living with someone for, you know, five, six days, and the kind of experience we get in being able to worship God together, I'd say it's essential to be having a strong youth group. Um, it's important to go on trips with the youth group just to get away from your everyday life and be around people in faith and learn more about God through the Bible. What part of the trip meant the most to me? I would say the conversations I got to have with so many of the other members of the youth group while we were working, while we were hanging out, while we were at the beach at Big Stuff, while we were just hanging out in the rooms at Fudge, whatever the case may be, the kind of conversations, I think that really meant the most to me. Um, I'd like to thank the congregation for supporting the youth group through all these trips. So, for this trip and for the youth group as a whole, there were a bunch of fundraisers throughout the year that we had, and I was at most of them, and the amount of people I saw who didn't have kids in the youth group or who didn't have to be there was amazing. The congressional participation was phenomenal. And I know that a lot of people uh, gave money to help kids come on this trip who couldn't necessarily afford it. That's great. And, you know, of course, to the chaperones too, which I have to say because my mom was a chaperone. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for investing in me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy Wise and I'm Alex and Marina's mom. This is the third year we've come to Funch together and we always get to serve in uh, different ways and it's always a lot of fun. 
In fact, after our first trip, we decided as a family that we were going to come every year and it was going to be our family vacation. The most meaningful part of the trip uh, for me is to watch all the youth work so hard together and so well together. It's also extremely encouraging to see uh, that they're all so interested in serving the Lord and watching them uh, growing spiritually during their devotional time. And in fact, it makes me want to strengthen my faith even more. I'm Emma Fitzgerald, I'm 14, and I wrote something down that I'd like to share with you. Um, this trip impacted me a lot by expanding my knowledge of Christ through my peers and their perspectives. Using each other to spiritually grow was a big part of both trips and, <laughs> and went a long way in the end. Growth not only happened with one another, but also during sermons. And as all were great, one stuck out. It told that even when we mess up, God still loves us, which is always reassuring. Listening is only half, though, because serving the Lord taught us all that even the simple things can mean a lot to someone. And you all, letting me come on these trips meant a lot to me, so thank you all, especially to the volunteers who also came on these trips. Hi, my name is Lila Baker. I just finished my first year at UF, and I went on a trip to Fumsh this year, so I'm just going to tell you about it. These trips are always a blast. I go, I've been on them several times, and I've been to Big Stuff. They provide an environment to grow, which isn't always possible with just going to church. You can't just have a sleepover at the church with your friends whenever you want. It totally immerses you in a Christian environment 24-7, which enables you to learn from your peers, learn from your leaders, and even learn from complete strangers. <clears throat> you grow closer to the youth group, forming strong Christian relationships. You form a support group that will always be there to guide you. This closeness also creates an environment where people feel comfortable asking questions and being wrong, and this enables them to learn more about God. We did a Bible study. We did Bible studies at Fumsh every night with Pastor Russ. One thing that really struck me was after reading 1 Timothy chapter 4, Pastor Russ talked about vertical and horizontal growth. Vertical meaning between you and God, and horizontal meaning between you and everyone around you. He asked each one of us which we feel is stronger in our life. This question made me look into my life and realize I'm pursuing one avenue much more than I'm pursuing the other. He emphasized the importance of growing both horizontally and vertically and how they complement each other. This lesson really opened my eyes to how this and other experiences from Frumpsch can be used to further my relationship with Christ. I would not have been able to experience any of this if it wasn't for the congregation and their donations and support. I would just like to thank all the leaders and the congregation for everything they've done. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask for those who have been, and when you've heard the, the, the term FUMSH, uh, Florida United Methodist Children's Home, uh, and so that you realize, and that is where we do our, we go there for the week and help out with various projects, uh, and so it is our mission opportunity uh, and ability to be able to help others. So I'm going to ask those of you in our youth group and uh, any of the chaperones uh, to come up at this time, and I'm going to ask them to just, you know, just briefly uh, share a little bit about uh, their experience, and then we're go we've got one of our, our youth that are going to, who is going to kind of close us up, and we can just stand all in a row right across the front, completely fine. There we go. Let them all see you. So... And we have curly hair today. Come on. Uh, not, I, I like that. All right, I'm going to start all the way down here. Uh, I didn't realize Connor went to the other end. Uh, and and just, just kind of share some of the thoughts that you had about uh, the trips this summer. Um, 
Hi, I'm Alex, and I serve with the youth uh, uh, each week with uh, Russ, Kim, um, also uh, our grill master Scott Sutton is also one of our regulars. Uh, Russ said briefly, so there's a lot to say, but so little time. Um, but anyways, I wanted to say three, three things that I'm proud of and thankful for. And I was on a trip this last week, and one of them is youth working hard and serving so we can serve with them instead of having to deal with problems. Uh, youth owning their faith through Deactivate, which is the youth run, after we have a Bible study that Russ leads, they lead their own Bible study after, and often this is after youth or after ones on their trip, and uh, we're more than happy to stick around. Uh, also, the youth building relationships, which Yes, they did stay up late, Russ, um, um, late into the morning, but the thing is, whatever less sleep they had, I'd say they're building relationships there, and also I'm just happy to help them grow and share their faith through um, going on trips like this and also uh, spending every week with them. So, Hi, my name is Linda Smith. I only get to play with the youth during Funch, but this is my third year with them. So uh, when my son, Sean, was old enough to go on, or young enough to go on youth trips and stuff like that, because of my work and my other commitments, I was not able to go with them. And I have always been absolutely grateful to all of the parents who went and chaperoned and put up with my child. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so um, three years ago, I decided that I was able and willing and I could go to Funch and it would be great to see what the kids are doing there and do some mission work of my own. So it's sort of like a payback situation. And I was so blown away by the dedication and the hard work and the awesome attitude of our kids that I have eagerly gone back every year and they are awesome. In fact, when I was checking out, because um, I had to buy some books at the thrift store, um, <clears throat> one of the, the lady who was checking me out said, we are so happy to have your kids. They work so hard and they have such a good attitude. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah. She, she says, I can't say that about every youth group. <laughs> <laughs> so we really do have awesome kids. Um, and they participated in the um, Bible study with Pastor Russ every night. And then they would continue into deactivate into the early hours of the morning. And I was so blown away by their faith, their insight into the scriptures, the depth of their questions, the quality of their answers. Um, they, they're just, we have an amazing group of kids and I am very grateful to all of the money that y'all have been contributing throughout the year and don't be afraid to go on a trip with them. <laughs> um, hi, um, my name is Anastasia. Um, I'm going to high school this year and I went on the middle school trip. Um, I'm not a public speaker, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, so two things that I really took away was one, um, my friend Emily and I, we have a lot of talks about religion. And we talk a lot about how church is in a building and how it's a community and a family coming together to worship and celebrate and grow, I'm sorry, and grow together. And so I feel like I really got to be close with my church family on my trip. And with the actual sermons, they talked about the mysteries of God and how we're never going to know everything. And I struggle a lot with doubting because there's so much we don't understand. And so it's just really reassuring to know you're not going to ever know everything. You can't know everything, but you can still believe and try to learn more. And um, I just really want to say thank you to all of you because I did a lot of the fundraising and volunteering and that's one way I actually got to go on this trip. So just coming and supporting and Donating, it helps a lot, <laughs> and just, thank you. Hi, I'm PJ Shermer. I went on the, uh, was it Flunk? Flunk, yeah. Flunk, whatever it is. <laughs> the Trump was home, the Trump was home one. And I very much enjoyed that one because of two reasons. Number one, because I was able to hang out with all these guys, and that's very important to me because in this day of age, and especially in high school, Many people, you know, it's very hard to open up and to find people that are as understanding and very loving as these guys. And it's very much 
like finding the diamond in the rust. So I'm very grateful that I could have these people because without them, I would probably be more of a shell than uh, I am right now. And uh, what's also very great is that we're able to help out these kids and these people uh, in the children's home and, and you know, buying stuff from the thrift shop because in the children's home, these kids, you know, they don't have parents. They probably suffered way worse than we can even imagine. And the people at the thrift store, they're buying clothes, you know, two dollars, three dollars. You know, some of them might not even have cars, and they might view, you know, toys and stuff like that as like a rarity, like like gold. So I'm very glad that we were able to help those people out who really need it more than we do. Hi, I'm Ariel Stromer, and Hi, I'm Isabel. Um, so I went to Funch, and I think the favorite part to me about the trip was how, like, when, like, it didn't really seem like much when we were just helping out at the thrift store and, like, hanging clothes and stuff, but, like, one of the workers there, they were like, oh, thank you so much and stuff. It was, like, really satisfying to hear, and, like, it really goes to show how much, like, the little things mean to people. And, um, another thing I think is how, like, when you're literally sleeping next to each other every night, you realize how close you are to one another. And how if you're ever struggling with something, like with your faith, you can always like ask for like reassurance or something and like figure it out. So that's good. And thank you to everyone that like helped making the trips possible because I know like a lot of people did. So thank you. Hi, I'm Spencer and I went on the high school trip to Panama City. Uh, this is my third time. Definitely a good experience, and one thing I took away was some of the messages that the speakers had to say were really impacting, and good music. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cyrus. Um, I gotta agree with Spencer. At uh, Panama City, they really had messages that touched my heart, and uh, I cried a few times. But... <laughs> So, um, I really just want to give everyone a thanks because uh, we couldn't have gone on that without you guys. And we love your support and we hope we can keep getting it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Caitlin Skates. I'm a senior. And big stuff has always been my favorite part of summer. I mean, you're spending a week on the beach with your friends. How is that not fun? <laughs> you get really close with everyone, as everyone has said. But I think the reason our bond gets so close is because we're both, we're all growing closer to God together. And you all have such crazy experiences that you can't experience, like just coming once a week. It's insane. Because you go, at Big Stuff, you go twice a day, and you're in a huge room with like 1,500 kids, and they provide us with awesome messages, and the worship is amazing. When I'm telling you it's a party for Jesus, it's a party for Jesus in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so inspiring to see so many teenagers like jumping up and down just for God and like really pouring their hearts out there for Him. It's just, it's my favorite part of summer and I'm so glad I can go on that trip. Hi, my name is Ariana Scrimshaw. I went to the Moda School trip or Grady State. It was my first time going. It was really fun, but my favorite part I took out of it was the family time, slash music, just to say. <laughs> like, the music made me cry once, so I was like, e. <laughs> And the drive was very long. It was, we took a halfway there, like six hours there, and then we stopped at Kim's house, and then the next day we had three hours. So that was long, and then the last, and then the last, and then coming back, it was about nine hours in the car. Thanks. <laughs> thank you all for <coughs> helping us with the fundraisers, and thank you. Hello, my name is Ember Halverson, and one of my favorite parts was just bonding with all of my friends and getting closer to each other. And we learned that you have to have, it's both important to have a strong relationship with God and your friends, and how you have to have both and not one or the other. 
and we learned that the smallest task can help in big ways. And one of my favorite parts was that big stuff, we could go to the front of the stage and like stand in front of the stage, I guess. And like it was like really powerful and fun. And so thank you all for your support and for the volunteers that came with us. What's your favorite color? Orange. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Abby Halverson. Um, I've been able to go to FUMCH most years since I was in sixth grade. Um, and I just want to thank everybody here who donates and who comes and supports us at the fundraisers and also just to everybody for praying, be praying for us while we're there because it really is an amazing week where we're able to spend time away from distractions that often get in the way of things and just really focus on God and on bonding together. I mean, every night after we would do our Bible studies with Pastor Russ, we'd get together afterwards and we would do our deactivate and we were able to we were able to put into practice all the things that Pastor Russ had been telling us about, about um, learning from each other and getting different perspectives. And we were able to figure out not only what we believe, but why we believe it, which I think is really important, especially for teenagers to be able to go into the world with knowing why you believe what you believe. It's much easier to keep your faith when you're not surrounded by other Christians. Um, but thank you guys, because it was a really amazing time. Hi, I'm Jake, and I went to Big Stuff in Panama City, and I feel that the sermons and songs, they really improved my spiritual bond with Jesus. And... Just... <laughs> Let me jump in here. Uh, Connor's actually going to uh, not only share his experience, but he's going to, um, he's, he's going to deliver a, a message this morning. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had sent out a, a card asking if you were ready to take your faith to the next level. Many of you have, have signed up on that. I, now that I'm back, I'll be responding to you a little bit more. Um, but in that, he actually said that he was really feeling led to, uh, to, to do some preaching. So, you know, with so many of our, our the youth groups, and, and as Linda pointed out, we heard over and over about our youth group this past week. And, and as a pastor, and for those of you that know me, I, I, I let them know. I said, come on, you guys say that to every youth group, don't you? And they said, we really don't. Um, there are some youth groups that are much more work uh, than they're worth. Uh, and some of them, they do absolutely nothing. Uh, said, your youth group, if you guys could come back every week of next summer, which I assured her we would not be doing that, but we would look forward to that time. Uh, it, it, it was amazing to see our, our youth just jump in. The last day, we had to go. they asked us to come back to unload a, a truck. Uh, and it was kind of a, a medium-sized truck, but it was slam-packed. And with all 14 of us... Um, the truck got unloaded, everything got placed in the, in the uh, thrift store, everything had been washed, uh, dusted, everything had been taken care of, and we were out of there by lunch, uh, and the one man whose job it would have been said that it would have taken him uh, into the second day uh, before he could have un uh, uh, unpacked everything. So they were blown away by the... Uh, the, the the youth group, not just their willingness to work, but how much fun they had in the process. The laughter, the singing that was going on, the, the goofiness that, that if, you, if you know their youth director, uh, you know, he, he models that very well. So, uh, and so I'm going to ask all of you, thank you for being up here, and I'm going to ask you to be seated. graduated from Sun Lake High School a couple months ago, and um, I'll be attending Florida State University within a matter of weeks. Uh, any Knowles fans in the house? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Alright, um, so I'm also going to give my testimony to uh, what I felt was really important uh, at these um, trips that the youth took, and then after that, 
um, I'm going to give a brief message uh, talking about and exaggerating on one of the messages we actually heard at Big Stuff. Um, so as you saw on the videos of the uh, uh, some of the youth that gave their testimony, there was a few questions that uh, Pastor Russ actually asked us a few days ago at FUMSH. And I really thought about these questions and I just wanted to um, answer them in both Big Stuff and FUMSH. And uh, the first question was uh, my favorite part of each trip. And for Big Stuff, of course, it was amazing all the way through, day in and day out. Um, but for me, one of my favorite parts that I always looked forward to was uh, small groups. And uh, after every uh, message in the both uh, morning and night, all the youth gathered together in one of the hotel rooms. And we talked about how the message impacted us. And we really got to um, talk about our faith and where we are in the walk with Christ. And uh, I loved that because, like I said, it's one of the few times <coughs> that the youth is actually together because a lot of the time, you know, we're just hanging out in our rooms or we're all dispersed at the beach or around the resort. And I just loved having that intimate connection with the youth group. And it really gave me insight on where we are um, in our walk with Christ. And it really gave us such a bond that you just can't find, um, you know, Sunday nights at 530. <laughs> um, uh, at Fumch, um, I, I, I remember this vividly. There was a time where uh, we were in the kitchen, or we also used as the rec room, um, and uh, everybody was having fun. They were playing with like balls, and they were laughing and smiling. And I was um, in the corner, uh, sitting down, and I just I just looked around and I took it all in, and I was overwhelmed with such joy. And um, I just felt the spirit within me, and it just it gave me such a feeling of thanksgiving towards the Lord and to the youth group because just seeing that at that moment there really was no animosity at all, there was no pain or negative emotions. It was all just really positive, and it was just such a great moment to take in. Um, the, the next question uh, is why trips are like these are so important, and um, like I was mentioning earlier. Um, the youth at 5.30 every Sunday, for those of you who do not come, um, uh, we do have a ton of fun. Um, uh, we go over a message that Pastor Russ gives, um, sometimes pertaining to the message in the morning, and then we go out and uh, we play games for a good half hour, sometimes volleyball, um, sometimes we're inside, but it's, it's just always such a good time. But given that it's an hour and a half, that's not a whole lot of time for us to truly connect with each other and learn about each other. And these trips, I think, make up for it. I know, um, I know at, at Big Stuff and Fomsh, I did connect with a couple of members I just wanted to talk about particularly. Um, you guys saw Alex up there. Um, uh, we've been friends for a couple of years at the youth group, but like I said, we, since we only have an hour and a half a week together, there's only so much that we can know about each other. And um, at Big Stuff, um, because we basically lived with each other, we were forced to uh, talk a little bit more about um, our personal lives, and being in that personal setting really gave us the opportunity to do that, and I absolutely um, thank God for uh, that connection that we gained together. And another member I wanted to talk about was also Emma. You also saw her on the screen. I did feel like um, Emma and I really connected more than we would have on any given Sunday night, and I'm just so thankful for God once again that I was able to to do that with these people. Um, the next question uh, was how Big Stuff and Function made my faith stronger. Um, and uh, the answer is it did make my faith stronger, but and to go into a little bit more detail, uh, Big Stuff, um, the message, the overall message that uh, they were trying to convey at Big Stuff was that we as Christians are originals. And not only in the eyes of each other, but in the eyes of God. And um, I really enjoyed that. And hearing that we are originals, um, it reminded me that standing out in your faith with God is not only right, but standing out, if this makes sense, actually makes you fit in uh, with God. And I just love that message. Um, and Fumsh, um, being that we did labor in the name of Christ, it really humbled me more than anything, and it was just an amazing opportunity, because I've never been uh, to Fumsh before last week, and any mission trip for that matter, and I was, I was just humbled, and it really gave me insight 
on the people that do this year round. There are people that go around the world even uh, constantly because they feel that they're called to that and I respect them so much and I had such a great time there. Um, and of course you hear you heard all the you say thank you and I cannot thank you enough for all of those who did support us in the trips. Uh, like Alex was saying on the screen, we uh, throughout the year we have fundraisers that um, fund these trips that we have in the summer and I can tell you right now that the youth was never alone in those uh, fundraisers and I just want to thank for those of you for all of your support and all of your donations and your volunteering because, and I just want to say it does um, go to a great cause I can tell you the youth who came to these trips were filled with so much um, so much of the spirit and so much happiness and I just want to thank you all. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, I'm going to talk um, about a sermon that uh, was given to us at Big Stuff by uh, a guy named Reed Moore. Excuse me. And um, as I mentioned before, the overall message at Big Stuff was that we are originals as Christians. And um, I will keep this very brief because I know I'm not the only one that smells the food through the door. And, uh, and so I will try to be as brief as possible, but I do want to get the message out there clearly and have it impact everybody here. Uh, so one of the messages that Reed gave um, talked about um, uh, our salvation and how we attain that. And I just wanted to ask everybody a question in terms of how we gain our salvation. Is God's grace necessary? And you can yell it out. Yes, yes absolutely, absolutely. God's grace is necessary. And it's, it's hard to find a faith out there, a religion out there, that says that grace isn't necessary. Um, usually you see that. But what really struck me and what I really researched in after um, I heard this message is that when it comes to biblical Christianity, what separates us from all other religions in the world is that... God's grace is not only necessary for salvation, but it's sufficient. It's enough. That's all we need. And I wanted to talk about that uh, today, giving some scripture, uh, supporting that, and also um, quoting some other religious texts um, from different religions around the world and give their viewpoint on it um, to show that how we truly stand out as Christians. Um, so I, I, I'm going to read out of... Romans and Ephesians today. Um, if you have your Bibles or you have the Bible app, you're more than welcome to open that up. Um, if not, I'll read it to you anyway. Um, <laughs> um, I'm using the ESV, the English Standard Version, for those of you who are wondering. So the first text that really stood out to me that Reed did use um, was in Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 23. And I'll let you guys who are searching get there. Romans 6, chapter 23. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Um, it's a pretty popular verse. Some of you may have heard it. Um, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> Amen. That's what I'm talking about. And, um, and we can see by this verse, Paul is talking about how um, if we sin, which we all do, um, that we are to be put to death. That is that is the wage for which that which we are given for sinning. Um, but in order to reap eternal life in heaven, in order to love God, we need His grace. And nowhere does it mention that we need to do something apart from receiving that grace from God. And I think that's amazing. Um, one more verse uh, is in Ephesians chapter two, um, starting at verse four. For those of you who are searching. Ephesians 2, 4. Um, another pretty popular verse when it comes to uh, talking about salvation and grace. Uh, Paul also writes here, and I quote, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show his immeasurable riches um, of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, 
not a result of works, so that no man may boast. And here, I, I love this verse, I read it all the time, because it really humbles me and reminds me that as a Christian, I believe that salvation with him is given by him and his grace, and that there's nothing that I can do to achieve that. And I just love that, it shows God's sovereignty and his glory, and I rejoice in that verse all the time. Um, so like I mentioned before, I'm going to um, tell you guys a little bit about uh, three different groups of people, um, three different religions that do contrast what the Bible says, and I do just want to put out a disclaimer. If you guys happen to belong to these groups, I just want you to know I'm not targeting you, and <laughs> I promise, and I'm not trying to point the finger. Um, I'm simply just showing how biblical Christianity uh, does um, pride itself as originals, how we are different from all other religions in the world. And the first one I wanted to talk about was Islam. Um, going and researching this, it, um, I don't know a whole lot about Islam, but uh, reading this does give me some insight on what their core beliefs are. Um, so out of, and um, just as another disclaimer, uh, these um, verses and these uh, scriptures that I'm reading are not biased. I did get them from their sources. Um, I just want to put that out there. So according to Islam, in the Holy Quran, uh, chapter 5, verse 9, it says, Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous deeds that for them there is forgiveness and great reward. And um, so we can see that, that there is an immediate contrast uh, where it is not just grace alone, but grace plus works. Um, and just uh, another quote from the Quran in um, chapter 42. Uh, and he who answers those who believe and do good deeds and gives them more of out of his grace and as for the unbelievers, they shall have a severe punishment. So here we can see that the, the again that the core beliefs of um, Islamic or of Muslims, they do believe that grace is necessary, but it is not enough that you need to do good works as well. Um, another group of people, another religion is um, the Latter-day Saints, also known as the Mormons. Um, a quote from the Book of Mormon, it says in 2 Nephi 25-23, and I quote, For we are labor, or from, sorry, for we labor diligently to write and to persuade to our children and also to brethren to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all that we can do. Yes, and um, <laughs> so here, I mean, if you compare this to the writings of Paul, they're in polar opposite directions, and um, it just furthers the point that we truly are originals from all other people. Um, the last group that I wanted to talk about uh, were, are the Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, they too believe that um, it is grace plus works in order to achieve salvation. Um, according to their website, the Watchtower Organization, uh, it says that they believe that you must have works or acts of obedience to join God in heaven. And I found this particular point very interesting. It says, if you don't work hard enough on earning your way to heaven, but you have salvation, you can actually fall out of salvation. You can lose it. And um, I found that very interesting. And one of their supporting points is actually used in the Bible. Um, another popular um, verse is used in Ch uh, James chapter 2. Um, uh, verse 17, it says, uh, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. dead. Exactly. And a lot of people use that, um, Christians even, where they say, Yeah, but so in order to achieve salvation, you have to have faith, but without, if you have faith without works, it's dead. Um, and I can see where the confusion is in that, but um, in fact, if you read James chapter 2 in context, uh, James isn't even t talking about how to achieve salvation. He's talking about how a person who is saved um, shows that they are saved. And, um, and I completely agree with James. You know, if you read uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, Paul talks about how Abraham uh, was saved before the law, before the sacrifice of Isaac, or the potential sacrifice, and before he was circumcised. So we can see that um, it says in Romans chapter 4 that Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness. And a lot of people are like, so 
is Paul contradicting what James says or the other way around? And of course, what I'm trying to say is that they're not even in the same conversation. And um, so that is uh, just a third group. And um, it, after researching this and listening to what Reed said at Big Stuff, it really struck with me how we as Christians truly are originals in the eyes of God and to other people. And I just, that humbles me more than anything. And it, um, I just give all the glory to God for that. And I just love that. Um, the bottom line is that um, uh, we have a Heavenly Father who gave up His Son for us. Um, not to give us the opportunity to be saved, but He came to save. And I believe that He did that wholeheartedly. And um, I just want to give Pastor Russ uh, a thank you for the opportunity to come speak to you guys. Um, like I said, I'll be leaving for college in about three weeks. And... Um, <laughs> I'm going to miss you guys more than anything, but that doesn't mean I will be gone forever. I will be back. Um, I know you've seen Matt Johnson here a whole lot. I'll be back in winter and Thanksgiving and all that good stuff, and I'll spend the occasional weekend here. But again, I just want to thank you guys for listening to me, and just to remember that God's grace is all that we need, not only in this life, but it's all that we need for the next life. And um, I, I was going to have Pastor Russ prayer, uh, pray for us, but before he does that, I do also want to do just a short prayer. So if um, everybody could please bow their heads with me. Father, as an unworthy servant, I pray that um, you bless this message and that your people hear what you want them to hear, Lord. And that I pray that they always remember that you sent your son to die for us and to save us. And that he rose again on the third day and put sin to the grave and proved himself as the Messiah for all of his children. And I just... I go day in and day out thanking you for that, Lord, and you are so gracious. And I pray that these people, as well as myself, remember that your grace is all that we need for everything that we do, and that there's nothing we can do apart from that. And you are so sovereign and you are so glorious, Lord, and I pray that we all remember that. And I just thank you for everything, Lord. And I love everybody here, and I just want to say um, that in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.